Welcome to Straight No Chaser. So grab a glass and join your host, your girl and BZ, Thin Bad, and the Chief. Welcome to Straight No Chaser, where we never dilute the issues, we only serve the hard stuff. It's your girl, Aunt Beezy. You know, I'm back. I'm back. And as always, I am joined by hey. my fabulous co-host, Thin Bad. Hey, hey, welcome back. Thank you, thank you. And the Chief. Hey, hey. So, owning a home is the American dream. If Well, I'm not going to say the American dream, but it's a big part of the American dream. There are at least 30 shows on the cable networks that feature people buying homes or flipping them, fixing them, or whatever else you can do to your home to make it, let's say, homier. (laughs) However, (laughs) it can be difficult to achieve the American dream if you are not prepared and willing to do your homework. There are a host of programs for buyers to buy a home and just as many to allow you to get cash to make the HGTV move on it. But which ones are good and what should you be aware of? Tonight we have Miss Yvitra Jordan from the home team of Exit Landmark Realty to explain some of the myths and realty, uh, realities <laughs> of purchasing mm, or leasing a home. Words, Listen, you can't say realty and realities in the same sentence, okay? Use that, your that's, words. that's a lot, that's use a your lot words. of similarities there. Okay. <laughs> but before we jump in, I want to remind the audience that you can call in at 702 425 7789 or chat with us live. We definitely want to hear from you. So, Miss Jordan, welcome to the show, of course. Yay. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. Of Thanks, course. T. Thanks, Sinbad. Thanks, Sam I'm excited Yay. to be on here tonight and sharing some information with you guys. Yes. And I'm sure there Welcome. are a lot of questions about home ownership that are floating around. But before I ask the obvious question, tell us a little bit about your background in real, real estate. Okay. So I. Um, I lead a team of 10 at the home team of Exit Landmark Realty. I'm licensed in Maryland, D.C., and Virginia. Um, Our team services most of Maryland, Northern Virginia, and all of D.C., of course. Um, And we, so my background is I've been in real estate for two and a half short years. It feels like I've been in it forever. Um, I retired from the federal government after 25 years to do this full time. Um, My background is in finance and budget um and I, my degree is in marketing so i feel like in real real estate i get to actually put it all together help people build well is one of my favorite topics to talk about so you pick the right person tonight and um and, and that's it we do a lot of home buyer education so this is perfect um for tonight we do a lot of um of seminars around all these topics that you just mentioned and because it's super important for me, at least, to make sure that um, the people that we're helping to, or that are looking to get a piece of the American dream, um, are able to do that and be educated along the way. So by the time they're finished with us, we want them to feel like they can actually be realtors. That's awesome. So jumping, I guess, piggybacking off of that, I guess we can start with the most basic and obvious question, which is, how do you qualify for a home? What are the basic things that you would recommend to people to to put them in the best position to qualify to buy a home? Okay. So the first thing that I'd say that people need to do is pack your patience. Mm. You're going to learn a lot about yourself during this process. You're going to learn a lot about your finances that you may not have known during this process. Um, and you're going to be, they're going to be asking a lot of you. It is the biggest financial purchase that you will make 
in your life, and most of the time, people only make it once or twice. Mm. So you want to get it right. The banks want to get it right. And right now, there, you know, we are in a in a place where people don't want a repeat of the the market crash, right? And people being in bad loans and awful loans because one in five homes in our area in the DMV are um, are short sales or foreclosures. They're they're considered distressed homes. And so we want to get out of that. We don't want to be back in that situation. Mm. Um, so you want to pack your patience. You also want to get a good understanding of where your credit profile is. Mm. You want to know the wow. health of your finances, and you want to be able to get a hold of your um, financial documents and the documents that you're going to need to qualify to um, give to a lender in order to be pre-approved because pre-approval is the first step to being able to know how much home you can purchase. Mm. Um, and once you know how much home you can purchase, then from there we can determine, you know, how much you want to pay per month because you don't have to pay as much as you're qualified for. But right. you do want to know the full picture. Most people go in saying, I only want a house for $1,200 a month or $1,500 a month. And so when you do that and when you have that conversation with a the lender, they're going to artificially deflate your qualifying number. Mm. So you always want to go in asking, what is the max that I qualify for? And then you get to choose how you spend that. So you always want to be in control of that number. Gotcha. Wow. I should have talked to you about 15 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it's never too late. Let's do it. So um, the other thing <laughs> that they want to <laughs> you they also want to make you also want to make sure that you have saved a minimum of five thousand mm. dollars for first time home buyers. If you are um, in most of our first time home buyers, um, because of the amazing programs that are out here, um, are able to get in for get in your home for under that. Mm. But you do want to have that in your um, bank account. A minimum of five k. Wow. So, Wavitra, kind of um, tell us about a few of just a few of the programs that are available for first time home buyers. Okay. So, um, one of the most common um, programs here in our area. One of the most common um, programs here in and that in our area that most of my first time home buyers have been using is the FHLB program. It's a federal home loan bank program, and not too many um, lenders have it. You have to be um, affiliated with a bank or a community um, um, a, a community bank in order to be able to uh, have that and be certified under the um, federal home loan bank program. What that is is you get five thousand dollars or seventy five hundred dollars that goes towards your down payment um, slash closing costs. And um, 7,500 if you're in a, what they call a, a special category, a police officer, school teacher, nurse, doctor, um, any other public service, um, you can get the $7,500. It's 5,000 if you aren't in any of those categories. And the great thing about this particular grant program is that it doesn't affect your interest rate. So there are a lot of grant programs out here, but most of them require a higher interest rate because they're going to charge you for the money that you're getting, um, and they take longer to um, to process because they also have a review or underwriting. Uh, that's my quote fingers are up. If you get, if you guys can see me here, my quote fingers are up. Their okay. own underwriting process. So it puts you in a position in a market where we are where you have more buyers than you have inventory and you're competing, it may it, it doesn't help you to compete because you're, you need a longer time to close on that house. Um, I like it a lot because it doesn't affect your interest rate. And I don't want to have to pay for the money if you're telling me it's a grant. And it's forgivable after five years. Stay in the house for five years, it goes away, and it's forgivable. Now, is there a, um, Oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Is there a a price point cap on that qualification? 
It is, and it is, and it depends on how many are in your family. So if you have children, um, the price point goes up, but the base, I believe, is like sixty thousand. Okay. For a single person. Gotcha. And then you have your um, your PG um, Maryland State programs. And those offer, some offer up to $20,000, but again, you're going to be at a higher interest rate um, where you, that you can, and many of those are not forgivable. So once you sell your home, go to sell your home, refinance your home. If you want to get in a lower interest rate, because the interest rates are great now, you have to pay that back. Wow. So that's not something that just goes away. It sits on the back. You don't pay, make any payments on it while you're in the house, but as soon as you go to change anything, you're going to be paying that money back. Mm. Wow. So those are some of the um, basic. You have the, in D.C., you have HPAP, um, which offers up to, um, uh, gosh, some some people get up to $80,000 um, for first-time home buyers. And, again, it's a rigorous process. Um, NACA is another one that is a very rigorous process, and many, many people, as a matter of fact, for the NACA program, they actually put you with a budget counselor, and you have to check in. They check your credit card, um, your credit card um, statement. Like, they are all in your business. Wow. Mm. And if you don't need that, I tell many of my first-time homebuyers, the money ain't worth it. Mm. Like you don't, if you don't need that, but if you are the type of person that needs that structure, then go for it. But when you're in the, that program, that I'm talking that specifically, a lot of the time they want, if one, if the person, the counselor that is on your file leaves, then that file goes to somebody new and they start all over. Mm. It takes a long time to get through. And many times people don't finish out the process. So wow. it's like a butterfly being in a chrysalis and you're just like waiting and waiting and waiting and all of a sudden you just bust out because and you're not ready. So you don't have the wings, you can't fly, and you just start the process over. And people get really frustrated. So I see a lot of first-time home buyers coming into this after trying and having been frustrated um, just because they weren't prepared for all that goes with it. You have a lot of stuff out there. Uncle Google will lead you wrong in this case. <laughs> you really need to talk to somebody who can help you navigate the best program for you. So one of the questions that I have, because, you know, I have to always, you know, speak up for my millennials. And one of the biggest things with our generation is student loan debt. So how... How does student loan debt affect, you know, qualifying for for a loan to buy a house or qualify for first time home buying? So I am the millennial realtor. So you again are talking to the right person. Um, <laughs> most of my clients are millennials because my daughter's a millennial. Yes. My son wants to be a millennial. He's like right at the cutoff. <laughs> um, and he's so he totally he's totally Gen Z, but he's where is he what he really wants to be a millennial <laughs> so um so their generation my daughter bought a home and all of her friends are now like hey can you help me too mm -hmm. um it's so student loan debt is a big big deal yes um it really I, is. <laughs> what i say to people is it is the um it, it is the newest form of slavery it mm -hmm. is financial slavery it really is it is holding people back from being able to build wealth. And it is really unfortunate because I feel like they, you get in, you want to go to college, you're gung-ho, you do your FAFSA, they offer you um, they offer you all this money. You don't even think about it, right? Mm -hmm. You're just like, okay, I'll take it because I don't have to pay it right now. Right. And then you're stuck. Many of um, some of my clients that are working through this thing now have over $100,000 of mm. student loan debt. Wow. And so what where you used to be able to take your deferred payment, you know, if it was deferred, like you could, they, they would only, um, you could get a income-based payment mm -hmm. and they would just take the payment.